I'll say this for Palomo. This place is gorgeous. What else is gorgeous? Is the transfer windows open? It's January. We've signed some players. We've sold some players, made a butt ton of cash, and we got ourselves knocked out of the Copa Italia. Anyway, it is time for some more Project Palermo. Welcome to Palermo FC. Here in the DP Dome, I am your old mate DP, and we are in 13th place in the league. We dropped some places. We've got 25 points from 19 games played. It's not dire, but it's also not f fantastic. Hopefully, we can fix that today. In the last episode, you saw us play Catania, our biggest rivals, our local rivals, the Derby. We won that 3-0 and beat Susanna 1-0. Then we went off to Reggiana and beat them 2-1. Things were looking great. And then here against Hellas Verona, we got knocked out of the Copa Italia. But that's fine. The board goal was to be competitive. Yeah, we were, but we were pretty toothless overall. Then we went away to Sud Tirol and we beat them 4-2. And I thought, yes, here we go. Goals are flying in from everywhere. Brunori scored, Vere scored, uh, other people as well. Lots of goals. Uh, and then against Katan, uh, Katanzaro, we lost 2-3. And that was very disappointing away from home. And then we've had a couple of friendlies because there was a big international break. This is purely for fitness reasons. Absolutely nothing to do with dynamics or trying to game the system and improve morale. None of that occurred at all. As I mentioned, January transfer window is open and we're doing some business. So in terms of players coming in, hopefully, uh, we need a goalkeeper because this happened. Uh, if we go over to here, you can't really see them, uh, but we've sent a bunch of players out on loan. Alfred Gomi, our goalkeeper, who let in, he was to blame for all of the goals that went in, in those losses. Diving the wrong way, diving too late. He's 32. He's not good enough. I didn't want him anymore. So he's gone out to none, uh, and he has left for the princely sum of 275000 Pounds. Not bad, considering we brought him in on a free. So we've turned a little profit there. Not a huge one, but hey, profit is profit. Also, Salvatore Sirigu, who'd been at the club forever. He's 39 now that it's ticked over into January. It's his birthday today. And as a present, we booted him. He's gone as well. He's gone to uh, Basaka here, FK. Bas Basaka here. No idea. Wherever he is, he's going to have a lovely time. Uh, but he's not here with Palomo anymore. 28 grand or 35 in total we got for him. Bunch of other players have gone out on loan, including Owusu, the right winger who scored in one of the matches we were just talking about. He looks great. He's got lots of potential, but I don't really have room for him in the squad. So we've sent him out to get some more experience. And hopefully when he comes back, he is going to be awesome. So he's at Grenoble for the remainder of the season. And in big news, Christopher Lund, who's been our left back, and being really good, we got a two and a half odd million pound offer from into Miami for him. And ultimately, I just couldn't turn it down. He's been great. He'd been at the club for a couple of years, but for 2.3 million, haven't taken a loss, but wanted the money. Wanted the money and he wanted to go. So why not? So to make up for all of that, we have brought in a couple of players. None of them are goalkeepers yet, but this guy, uh, this guy, I should say, this is Christian Valpato. He's Australian, like me. He's got 16 caps and six goals for his country. He's got all of these numbers happening. He's almost got a lovely little love heart going over here, but he's rubbish in the air, but he's quick. He's got good vision, good technicals. He's a little bit mental uh, somewhere. No, no mentals there. Fine. Uh, yep, there we go. A little bit mental, but not too mental, which is important. His physicals are good. I think he could be brilliant for us. So we've brought him in for a bargain price of 450 grand, and only half of that is up front. I think that is a stunning piece of business, and I'm patting myself on the back for that one. Also, we are affiliated with Manchester City. They're not a parent club, but they're part of the City group, and we, we can loan their players for free. This guy came up on a scout report, Afonso Moreira who also looks about as good as Volpato. Uh, his little histogram thingy over here, not quite as gorgeous 
he's a rubbish defender, but he's a winger, so he doesn't need to defend. Technicals are good. Better pace, good physicals. His attacking stats, we can work on that and train him up. But also, again, rubbish in the air. But with a value of 32 to 39 million pounds, we are paying absolutely nothing to have him in online. Thank you, Manchester City. And thank you, City Group. Love that. In other news, in terms of what else is going on, uh, Jonathan Pital, who is a young attacking midfielder that we're not going to use, is never going to be good enough, given that we're aiming to go up to Syria. Uh, we've got a bid in for him uh, just to go out on loan. I've tried to sell him. Nobody wants him. Nothing I can do about that. But players in. We desperately need a goalkeeper. So I put in an offer for this guy, Michel Serofellini, who looks decent. Low eccentricity, although not as low as I'd like. He's conceded 24 goals in 20 games in Serie B for Frosinone. And that's pretty much par for the course. 1.2 million is the bid for him with 14 grand a week on the contract. And then the director of footballs put in a bid for a guy I'd overlooked, Christian Fructel. And he looks every bit as good, more eccentric, which is not ideal. But if we compare him to Serafellini, it's much of a muchness. If anything, is a little bit better uh, aside from being more eccentric. Better in the air, better shot stopping, a little bit lacking in other areas, but it's much of a muchness. Basically, I've got a decision to make whether I go with Serafellini and spend the £1.2 million pounds or take Fructo in on loan and look to replace him in the summer. I think this includes an optional fee as well a mandatory fee optional future fee of 140 grand which is not bad we are going to be paying for the loan but i think fruit is a better option and he's won a champions league or at least a european cup of some description can't remember read it minutes ago it's in the past get over it alessandro mercandali or Marcandali is a central defender and we have need of them and he looks pretty good indeed. We've put in a, a bid there. He's been at Genoa and a few other places, but he looks decent. The offer for him is what? Uh, free. He'd come in next season, so not urgent there. Uh, Jefferson Paz is a recent uh, attempt. 125 grand for this guy. There's nothing wrong with him, and I want another right back because we're lacking options. At right back, but we're also lacking options at left back now that Lund has left the club. So I'm working on that too. He's Colombian, he's 23, hasn't had a huge career, but he's been at Sassuolo and uh, Inter de Palmira and Perugia and Tristina. He looks fine and he can help us out. So I'm a bit excited about him and he's only 23. Also, Samuel Dahl is another low knee I'm hoping to bring in to give us that cover at le left back that we now desperately needs played a couple of games up in Syria for Roma it's played over in Hull in the championship and done a bit of a tour of Sweden as well but hopefully he can come in and do a job for us but right now the mission is to go uh to Brescia or rather they're coming here that saves time Brescia are coming to our place and let's jump into the game and see if we can beat them here we are then, your squad for the Brescia game. So Desplanches, he's got a funny name in goal. It's his debut. He's 22 years old and he's a bit rubbish. He's a fringe player who could still improve, apparently, but low eccentricity, which I like in a goalkeeper. Decent figures everywhere else. Plus, he's the only goalkeeper worth his salt at the club. And that's saying a lot. So he's in goal. It's going to be fine. Uh, Dichiara gets a nod at left back because we don't have Lund. He's off in Miami drinking cocktails and hanging out with Messi, I suppose. Ceccaroni, Nicolau and Pierozzi will make it up the remainder of the defence. Blin and Ranocchia are our defensive midfield pairing. Blin's going to play as a Segundo Volante because it sounds fancy. And Ranocchia is our defensive midfielder. We promised him some game time. See there, promise. Give him more starts. We're probably on the verge of him ticking over to the green for the promise. And then we can start rotating a little bit. But another few weeks of him playing in midfield to shut him up, basically. De Mariano, Vere and Di Francesco are our attacking midfield behind Brunori, who I've changed to a complete forward because he can do that 
and I love me a complete forward. Hopefully, that can help him get firing. We need to give a squad number to Afonso Marrera, who is another new signing who we've already talked about. He'll be on the bench today. He's not fully fit, but I suspect you'll see an appearance from him. Also, Valparte, the guy I brought in, the Australian who I'm very excited about, came in, as he does, and got immediately injured. So he's out for about four weeks. Might meet him in the next episode, but he won't be playing a part today, sadly. We've done a team talk. No idea what I said. Uh, I think we need to show everyone the recent praise is justified. Put on a real show out there. Good work, Giuseppe Carrillo, assistant manager, Giuseppe Carrillo for short. Everybody's happy. Let's go and kick the ever-loving snot out of Brescia and get back to winning ways, please. So our current position is 11th. Other games have been played. We've rocketed up the table. Job down. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. Oh, no, we actually have to play the game. Okay. Hopefully we don't screw it up. Here's a free kick from Vera, and he was not far away. Their goalkeeper didn't even move, and he's hit the outside of the post. But that was a decent effort. Brescia are up in sixth place on 31 points, so we're not miles behind them. And if we can pick up a win here, we could jump up to 10th, which would be delicious. We're well on top early. We've got another highlight here, which is really good. But their keeper's playing that ball. Yes, I stumbled over the word, or words, really good i just drew a blank i couldn't think of a way to explain what was happening and that was the best i could come up with i could stop and re-record that bit but i'm not going to it's not how we roll around in these parts we own our mistakes it's all about accountability that's the culture we're building at paloma here's De francesco he plays it into Brunori, but he is miles offside still promising to see him get on the end of a cross finally but he needs to do it within the laws of the game complete forward or not it's awesome that he can do it, but he's not above the law. And the referee is just reminding him of that along with the linesman. I've been disappointed with Brunori. I had high hopes for him after our last stint at this club because he was great. The only reason we moved him on back then in the Wizard of Oz series is because he was old. And I saw a shiny, young, high-potential striker, and I thought, that's the ticket down in Syrup. He'll develop, he'll become a five-star player within the first month and it'll be awesome and none of that happened so we're keeping Brunori he's going nowhere and he's going to come good and if he doesn't we've got Chidari down on the bench who has been better and more effective that was a great ball in but everybody missed it right across the face of goal here's Blin with the header Brunori's in Brunori's got a goal everybody oh it's an absolute miracle we're going to bring in the goal celebrations into the series because I use them on stream all the time and I like them. Spider-Man and Deadpool rocking out, celebrating their victory. You must, must respect that and you must love it. It's a great ball in. Blaine with a good header but didn't get any power on it. It doesn't matter. Brunori was there to fire it home and it's 1-0 to Palomo and I didn't see what that did to the table because it went away too quickly, which is quite rude. Here's Ciccaroni, passes over to Nicolau, classic Italian name, Nicolau. And he's just dribbling around in the middle of the field, showing off his adequate ball handling skills. Stop giggling. Uh, De Mariano now, into Brunori, plays it across. De Vera, who shoots from the edge of the area, and that kissed the top of the net. Just kissed it, tiny little kiss, like it was kissing its sister. Don't kiss your sisters, folks. I mean, do, but in a platonic affectionate, family type way. Anything beyond that, you're probably getting a phone call from some angry folks. Right, uh, this is one of their plays with the ball, but Ciccaroni has got the tackle in. That's never a penalty referee. Never in a million years. I'm just cool, calm and collected over here in my green suit, walking away from the ref, probably muttering something under my breath, but no penalty, surely. He's having a look at the TV. He's watching some... Brooklyn 99 or Parks and Rec, probably. Help him make up his mind. No penalty. Vindication for your old mate DP. And we can just get back on with the game and st stop this ridiculousness from Br Brescia thinking they've got a right to be in any kind of contest. It's entirely unreasonable. Right. Di Francesco now. Over to Ranokia. And I'm going to say his name like that for, uh, forever so we 
kind of need to sell him because that's going to get old fast. If Francesco, though, to the byline, crosses it in. Vero's there. Vero's got his goal. His third of the season. Lovely stuff from him. Beautiful strike and great work from De Francesco, who's been very hot and cold early in his stint here. But that was lovely. Look at this run. Just beats his man, cuts inside, threads the needle. Vero's there in acres of space. I was going to say just space, but there were acres, and that needs highlighting. And a beautiful finish to put the ball in the back of the net and give us a 2 0 lead going into half time. We need to show everyone the recent praise is justified. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That talk worked last time, it's worked again. And we go into the second half feeling confident with a spring in our step. And as things stand, up to 10th place in the league only eight points off those automatic promotion places don't you know Nicolau's there with a header no joy here's De Francesco shoots and the keeper's got down to send that out for a corner we've had a few corners so far in this game and I'm absolutely here for it here's Di Chiara Di Chiara we'll go with Chiara otherwise we're gonna have to do with a lot more giggles sorry for the jump cut there I was tripping over my tongue really badly that's gonna happen from time to time I'm going to cut them out for now. Eventually, I won't give a toss and I'll just leave them in when I get, get tired of editing. See, I did it again. Don't know what that's about. Clearly, my brain is broken. We can make some substitutions and I've completely forgotten that I have the legal right to do so. So Marrera is going to come on. We're also going to bring on Vasic. Let me talk to you about Vasic for a moment. So this guy's been knocking around since we got here. I haven't really used him. I th think he's made some cameo appearances uh, six so far hasn't been great 6.64 he's been rubbish in the UEFA Nations League as well for Serbia but he's got eight caps for Serbia and look at this potential four and a half star he's got yellow numbers in all the right places there's nothing wrong with this guy and he wants to be an advanced playmaker we've been struggling to create chances at times and I would like to do more of that so I'm bringing him into the uh, into this team and he's part of this new young front line that I've, I'm building with uh, Valpato over here, Marrera on the left, and Vasic in the middle. Hopefully, that's going to work. We do need a right back to come on because Pierozzi's not having his best day at the office. And I think it'll be... Uh, let's have a look at Patare. He's another young un. He's not great at... at uh, what's his? Central wing back? No. <laughs> Complete wing back, you idiot and uh, he can't really do that, but he's going to learn to. It'll be fine. But this guy, also decent potential, numbers in all the right places. We're going to use him because he's only 23, and he could uh, play a part in our future moving forward. And I think that will do for now. Actually, we'll have a look at Jadira as well. Bruno's got a goal. I'm happy with his efforts. He can have a rest. Lovely. Only like 13 minutes to go so these guys aren't going to make a huge difference to to what we're doing hopefully let's just not throw away the lead lads let's hold on to it keep doing good things because we like good things and pick up three points enough said really Blin over to Ranukia to Vasic now here we go get to have a look at him in action Shadir is in and hit the post I think he was offside, though. He did look offside. We're not going to get a replay of that one. It was pretty obvious. If you doubt it, the proof is in the pudding. The highlight just ended, and the goalkeeper set up for a free kick. So you've got to you've got to go where the evidence leads you, people. But Brescia now on the attack, and I'd like to not throw away late goals, and I'd love a clean sheet for Desplanches, a rubbish goalkeeper. That would amuse me no end. Uh, a couple of minutes ago, we are literally in injury time, and I'm just going to throw some substitutions at the wall and see what sticks. Because we can. We've got a couple left. Uh, Blin could come off for a two-second rest, and Segre can come on. No, he won't. We can't make any more substitutions. Fair enough. And for the last 40 seconds of the game, we'll see how we go. Here's Nicolau. Plays it up to Bataro. Great name. Uh, De Francesco has lost out though. There was a wayward pass, and we need to be on our toes here. 
Oh, this punch has just nearly tipped that into the back of the net, but it's hit the bottom of the crossbar and out. And that is a win. 2-0 to Palermo against a team much higher up the table than us. And I'm very happy. Nice work, everyone. That was good. I like it. Everyone's rushing out onto the pitch. It's a pitch invasion. 10th place now, mid-table, exactly where the board want us to be. The fans want us up to here further. And again, we're not that far away from it. Eight points off pizza. Couple more wins and we're in the mix. And crucially, creating a gap between us and that horrible, horrible relegation zone that we dipped our toes into, albeit briefly, but it was still a thing. This guy would like to negotiate a contract. So let's see, uh, let's see what he wants. More appealing options elsewhere. Don't know what you're talking about, Paz. His name's Paz. I'll rename him Paz Dispenser if he comes in. Uh, immediate contract start, squad player, fringe player. Yep, I'm cool with that. Doesn't want a lot of money, but I would like to bin off any wage rises. And he's up for it. Beautiful. So Jefferson Paz might be coming in. Paz Dispenser. That's going to be his name if he signs. Guaranteed. I'll forget now. Marrera's made his debut. This guy's been spotted at the stadium. The Citadea boss is looking at splunches. Why? Why? All right. Uh, I will go away. I will let you know if anything interesting happens in between matches. But when we come back, our next match in the league is against Gradone. I've got to stop doing the accent. Here's something we've all dealt with in Football Manager. We desperately need a goalkeeper. Let's set a recruitment focus to find a goalkeeper. Scouts go out, come back. Have you heard of Gavin Bazzuni? He plays at Southampton. He's only worth 20 to 28 million pounds and really good. You should sign him. Great idea, Scouts. Anybody else? Bert Verbruggen. He's at Brighton in the Premier League. He's really good too. Five-star potential and only 50 to 61 million pounds. Scouts. You're amazing. Only one slight problem. I've got a transfer budget of 3.4 million. You idiots. Here we go. Alessandro Marcandali is in. Five grand a week. 23-year-old centre-back. That is a decent piece of business. Only wants to be a regular starter, so we don't have to stress too much about it. his game time. Very happy with that signing. In on a three-year deal. It's all coming thick and fast now. Stop giggling. Uh, Michelle Serafellini is ready to come in, but he's going to cost £1.2 million. And as I said earlier, I've got a decision to make. So what I want to do is delay that for a week and see if the lone goalkeeper wants to come in instead. Oh, Abdulgard has pulled his knee ligaments and he's out for two to three weeks. You should just leave it alone. Stop pulling at it, you idiot. And Chidira has a tight thigh. Very sad. Very, very sad. We're not, Ranokia is still upset about his playing time. What do we have to do? He's been playing every game. Anyway, we'll back in a minute if we've got any news. It's game day and we're ready to face off against Crotone. But we did have a little bit of bad news. Uh, neither of the goalkeepers have come in. So what's his face? Uh, Deschamps, Deschamps, Deschamps is going to be jumping in. Uh, we have signed Mokandali, as we mentioned, but... That's not going through until July. And uh, Paz, Paz signed for a different club. We're not getting him. And that was all very, very sad. So that happened. But right now, we've got a match to play against Crotone. So let's go and do that. No changes to the starting squad for this one. If it works, it works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's the news I was going to tell you. We did sign a player. This guy has joined us, Samuel Dahl. He is a proper, proper left back. He's going to be our backup. We got him uh, on loan for not too much cash and the option to buy him for 300 grand at the end of said loan is delightful. So expect to see him come off the bench maybe today, but it's nice to have a left back available to help us out because we didn't have any backup at all. But everybody else is starting who started last time. So let's go and get into the match. I'm confusing myself. Words is hard. That's a phrase you're going to hear a lot here on the channel. 
especially through this series. So the teams are warming up. We're in the change rooms. The lovely ones. Gratone have set, set, uh, have set us up quite well here. If you carry on your last performance, gents. We'll do well. And well, we shall do. I'll try to remember. I'm allowed to make substitutions before the 80th minute in this one and freshen things up if we need to. But Crotone are just below us in the league. They're down in 12th place. We're in 10th. There was a news report saying we could jump as many as four teams depending on other results. We're on 28. So this would put us on 31. We could go all the way up to 7th if everybody else screws the pooch. Hopefully they shall. But we do have uh, a bit of a question mark over our goalkeeper in Desplanche. See what happens. These guys have only got 10,000 people in attendance. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They can probably still play us off the park. We need to do our part and do a football goal thing. So far, absolutely nothing is happening. They're playing a boring old 4-4-2. Look at that. It is gross. We've had a shot, though. We didn't get to see it, so it can't have been that great. Can we have a highlight, please? I'd love to see our players running around in their away kit. Mariano's just picked up a knock. He's injured. We're going to have to make a change. He doesn't have a little first 80 cross on him, but he hasn't bounced back the way he plays sometimes to do with the, the heart indicator, which is disappointing. Here's the Chiara out wide. Blin crosses in to Mariano. He's there. That's taken a deflection and gone out for a corner. At least we got a highlight. That's a positive. And now the Chiara takes the corner over on that far side. Hits it into the centre, and Nicolau is there. Dimitri Nicolau's first goal of the season. Our set pieces work. Yes. Glorious stuff. And we take the lead in the 30th minute away to Crotone for a crucial, crucial bit of pressure to place on the opponent. We need to rip their heart out. Not literally, figuratively. And get them out of contention for this game. Because this would put us up into seventh place as things stand, and then only five points behind Pisa for an unlikely uh, title run if we're not <laughs> run for the title. That is ridiculous. But Cotone have the ball now in extra time of the first half, or time added on. It's not really extra time. Extra time, it's a different thing. It doesn't generally happen in the league unless you're playing in a weird one. But they're making progress down this right-hand side. We need to box them up if we can. Uh, De Mariani is there. Gets the challenge in. Beautiful stuff. Blin headed it up to Brunorio, back to Vera, and now other players touched it. Blin again has given it away. That makes things easier. Now I can just swear at him instead of trying to call the match, which is great. Thanks, Blin. Looking out for me, you idiot. Uh, let's get the football, please. Don't let him into the area. No. Ah, oh, he's just sitting there waiting for it. The flag hasn't even gone up. That's disappointing. That was just amateur hour right there. Let's have another look at it. This guy just plays it out, runs it in. We can't catch him. Straight, uh, straight across. And I don't know who was supposed to be marking him, but whoever it was didn't. And it's cost us a goal. And I'm not happy. We're not going to talk about the fans. Uh... Keep going, you can get the win. That hasn't worked at all, has it? Nope. So we'll drop some encouragement for the boys straight away. Get some smiling faces. Brunori's not shown up. He's on a 6.5. Vera's not shown up. The attack is not really working. And we've only had five shots all game with two on target. Right. It's time for some changes. Hey, Renoki is injured. Fantastic. That means we can bring Segrea on. Swap these guys around. That will suit me nicely. De Mariani has been carrying that knock. Uh, Marrera can come on for him. I'm going to take off uh, Vere and bring on youngster Vasic. And Di Francesco as well has been ineffective. So Eddie Salcedo is going to have a run on that right-hand side. What do you want to be over there, champ? A winger on support. All right, well, let's, let's make your dreams come true. There you go. Winger on support. Four changes. Confirm that, and we've got Ch Chidira ready to come on up front. Ch 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 Chidira. The name's so nice, I have to stutter eight times while I say it. Or twice. That's the saying. The Chiara now crosses in, plays underneath it, and nope. No good. 
So Gray, now over to Nicolau. We're building from the back. This is nice. Vasic, the youngster, looking to play it over for Marrera, who's recovered from a poor defensive header. And Vasic is in. His first goal of the season. I'm a tactical genius. We've retaken the lead. Good bit of play between the two youngsters. One, a recent addition on loan, showing his £40 million value there. Went into the mixer. Brunor has just fallen over. It's tying a shoelace. And Vasic is just like, cheers. Cheers, Brunori. I'll take that one. And fired at home. 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one to Palermo. And we've got some tired bodies out there. I wanted to bring... I really wanted to bring Chidera on, but we probably need some fresh legs. Well, let's have a look at Dal on the left. Blit will be fine to carry on there. And Dal can come on over here. What do you want to be? Uh, a winger. That's way too high up the pitch. A complete wing back. You know what? Fill your boots, son. Complete wing back on support. Let's see what he's got. Just inside 20 minutes to go. We need to hang on. Do a job, Mr. Dahl. Oh, should we rename him Rold? I'm very tempted. Very, very tempted. But we'll see... What sort of a story he tells, eh? Eh? Story? Well, no. We've missed that shot. It was not a million miles away, though, from curling in at that far post. I like what I've seen today. Much more positive signs. We've got a bit of a, a settled team now. I'm starting to learn the players. Who does what? Who's good at what? Splanches is good at diving around and not having to touch the football. If you fail, this is an actual shot, I'm going to be very concerned because he's not the man I want between the sticks. But he's what we've got. Five minutes of time added on now. Splanches kicks it out. Just lump it up the field. I like where your head is at. Vasic collects over from a poor header from their defender. We've got some space to run into. All the Crotone players are trying to get back behind the ball. Vasic into Marrera. Plays it across to Brunori. It's bounced out off the defender. Blin back into Brunori. Plays it out to Birozzi. And Salcedo's being fouled in the area. That is a penalty. We're not going to have to go to the little telly for that one. Clear as day, ref. Why are you even talking to the VAR room? We all saw it. There you go. You could watch my replay when the video drops. It'll be fine. And here's Brunori with a chance to score. It's his second goal in as many games if he doesn't botch the penalty. He does botch the penalty, but the keeper botched it more. He went the right way, couldn't stop the shot. And that's Renori's seventh goal of the season. He's got five goals now since we arrived. which turned his season around and the season of this club. Two goals up with, what, 15 seconds to go? We've secured these points. And my word, we've gone from, like, what, 13th up to 7th just in this episode. And that was excellent. Good work, everybody. And that was from one nil down as well, I think. Was it? 45 and 3? No, no, no. They equalised. That's right. So one all at half time. We've come back and taken the points. Absolutely delightful. Everyone around us has got a game in hand, so we're not going to stay in seventh. But again, five points between us and Pisa. Um, yeah, it's still too early to be looking up the table and thinking about anything along those lines, I'm not even going to say it out loud, but you all saw what was happening there and you're all aware now. So just keep that under your hat. I assume we all wear these hats. Now, Renoki's injured. How long is he out for? Three weeks. That should take him over the end of the, the promise that I've made. He's got 26 days left, but he's pleased with his playing time. Ooh, that makes life easier. Fantastic. That wasn't deliberate. I didn't hurt him myself. Dahl's made his return to Italian football and didn't look out of place. Everything's going well. So, that being the case, I will finish off January with the match against Venezia offline and finish off the transfer of window. Anyone new who comes in, hopefully a goalkeeper, you'll meet in the next episode. And we will come back next time, I think, for the match against Pisa. Pisa and uh, Sutti Roll. Pizza. It's a pizza and Tootsie Roll party. Pizza and Tootsie Roll. That's what we're coming back for. You'll see those matches next time.
with all our shiny new players and hopefully a whole bunch more of green dots. If you're having as much fun as I am here in Italy, don't forget to hit the like button and tell everybody and also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. It's going to be huge. But until next time, I shall see you next time. Say hi to your mum for me and be good. If you can't be good, don't get caught. Oh,